Good morning. morning. Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hutter, and we're delighted to have you with us on this gray but beautiful fall day. I want to uh, begin by offering some thank yous. Uh, We uh, enjoyed our community dinner on Tuesday night, and our normal organizers for that, uh, Amy and James, uh, uh, have been unavailable. Amy's uh, mom has been quite sick, and so Susan Herzog-Bloomer jumped in to organize that, and we had a good crew of volunteers showed up, and it was just a wonderful dinner. So thank you all for that hospitality. Looking farther ahead on uh, the 28th, uh, we have the dedication service for our building project, and we'll, be ha- we'll have lots of special guests that day. Uh, Pastor Jenny will be back, uh, and Dan Dick, who is the assistant to the bishop, will be here, and Shukar Yang, who is our new district superintendent, will be here. It's going to be a great celebration. We've got uh, special things planned, and we ask you to uh, join us for that. Uh, For those of you who have difficulty hearing, um, we are uh, making improvements to our sound system. We have our new microphones installed. Uh, We'll be doing other work this month, and then we're looking at uh, improved options for the hearing impaired. But if it would help you uh, uh, to to follow along during the message, uh, the ushers do have large print copies of my sermon available. Uh, Just ask them for those when you get to church. And then uh, finally, in your bulletin, you will find a blue card. Uh, That is uh, for uh, your attendance. So write your name on there. If you're a guest or if you've changed some information, go ahead and fill in the rest of it. Uh, And if you've got a prayer request, write that on there. And you can drop those in the offering plate. Or if you are a visitor today, then take that back to the Welcome Center by the TV screen and the coffee pots. And we'll be glad to get to know you a little bit better and uh, give you a free gift following the service. Let's go ahead and begin our uh, worship together now by greeting each other with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. Good morning. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. Peace be with you. Let us join together in the call to worship. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly, we your humble children, invoke your blessing on us. We adore you whose name is love, whose nature is compassion, whose presence is joy, whose fared is truth, whose spirit is goodness, whose wholeness is beauty, whose will is peace, whose service is perfect freedom, and in the knowledge of whom we stand for our eternal life. Unto all, all honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us join in singing number 140.
You may be seated. Our scripture reading today is found on page 881 of the Pew Bibles, if you would like to follow along. <clears throat> it's Matthew 6, 8b through 13. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, if the children would like to come forward for children's time. Good morning. Look at this cool thing I got. Isn't that great? Now I have my hands free. Yeah. No, you don't get to hold my microphone anymore, do you? No. <laughs> Bummer. So it's good to see all of you today. We're all kind of cramped in here. So after listening to the scripture reading, you might already know the answer to this question, but do you know you can talk to God anytime you want to and he listens to our prayers, all of them? Yeah. So he knows each one of your voices and he made each one of you unique and he knows your prayers and he wants to listen to what you have to say. So now you don't have to raise your hands to this question, but I want you to think about it. If you've ever thought about praying to God and thought, well, that's not, that's kind of a silly prayer, or that prayer might be a little too small, people have bigger problems than that, things like that. But I want you to know something, and that is that God listens to all of our prayers. So. You might be wondering why I have two bananas with me today. I don't even like bananas. No, same, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. And I had the staff singing on uh, Tuesday about bananas. Does anyone know Banana Phone? Yes. Yeah, great song, right? Ring, 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 banana phone. Yeah, so, but did you know, <laughs> do you think it might be silly if I talked into one end of the bananas and thought it might come out at the other end of the bananas? Yeah. Well, you know what? It works. Watch. Yeah. Do you guys know the um, words to the song, Jesus Loves Me? Yes. Okay. So listen. I'm going to talk into this end of the bananas, but there's a trick. You have to hold the bananas really close together and touching, and I'm going to put this up by my ear. Jesus loves me. This I know. And you can hear it come all the way through the bananas. Who wants to try? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so hold them tight, and then you talk into, and then you put one end by your ear, like that end, yep. And then you talk right into the other banana. Say, say like, Jesus loves me, this I know, so you can hear it. Can you hear it? Who else wants to try? Yeah. You need, okay, just hold on to that. Is that kind of cool? Okay, keep passing them around. No, I don't want to do it. You don't have to do it. <laughs> you want to try? <laughs> That's okay. We're all friends. <laughs> so what do you think? It tastes good a lot. They taste good? Yeah, well, we're not going to eat these bananas. You probably don't want to eat these bananas. Yeah, so... There is a scientific method. It has something to do with the sound traveling in the bananas, and if they're together, so it kind of reverberates up through the bananas. But I guess my point is that sometimes when we talk to God, we might feel like our prayer is kind of silly, kind of like talking into bananas. But God knows each one of your prayers, and he wants to hear all of your prayers, whether they're silly or not silly. So how about we say a prayer? Okay. Good and gracious God, thank you for always being there when we pray. We can trust that there is no prayer too big, too small, or even too silly for us to share with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. It was a quick trip. It's bananas are 39 cents a pound. I'm guessing they're going to be selling a lot of bananas today because we're all going to be going, does this really work? 
sale. They're on sale. 29 cents a pound, says the Quick Trip guy. Thank you. So that's right, several Quick Trip guys. All right. Well, uh, uh, for our God moment today, we are looking forward to welcoming some new members of our congregation. And I'm going to invite them uh, to come up at this point and uh, introduce them to you. Uh, we've got uh, Roger Beam. whose family has been doing this bit by bit, and you just finally got with it. So we got gotcha. you. Good. And then Faith uh, this morning is coming up to join us. Mm -hmm. uh, Faith, uh, uh, well, these are, many of these are familiar faces. They've been around for a long time, and Faith has been helping us out uh, with the music, too. We really appreciate that. Uh, Brian and Debbie Mayfield. Brian, you're not wearing Packers colors today. Yeah, they don't play today. They play they, tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> you and Ben have a lot to talk about. Ben's our resident Vikings fan. So, and then uh, Rod and Judy Rommel. Welcome. And we're going to invite uh, you folks to follow along either on the overhead or on the green insert in your bulletin. And don't panic, guys. It's going to be up above, so you don't have to have it memorized. So, Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. This morning, I present these people who come to join in membership with the congregation. Now, these questions are for you folks. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do. do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the uh, church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Well. Okay, congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these people now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these people with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk the way that leads to life. Let us join together, all of us, in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. All right. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church 
and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. I will. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of God, I commend these people to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of our church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Welcome. Brenda, if you'd like to come up, uh, and if you want to skip to the next slide here, uh, we are also celebrating uh, Brenda this morning. Brenda uh, was baptized at Pine Lake Camp uh, this summer. Uh, she was there at family camp, and uh, the Spirit moved in you. And uh, we were blessed. Uh, we had a retired pastor and district superintendent from Missouri who was there. And so the arrangements were made. And uh, we really celebrate uh, your birth in Christ as well. I'm going to ask Wes to come up as a representative of our uh, congregation. Go ahead. Um, there you go. Uh, they're not in order. <laughs> there you go. So, Brian and Debbie, welcome. Rod and Junie down there, welcome. Roger, welcome. And Faith. And Brenda. We are so delighted to welcome you and uh, all of you and to celebrate with you and we look forward to serving alongside of you. Let's give them another round of applause. You guys can head back to your seats. As we move on in our service, let's join in our prayer of confession this morning. God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but by our readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead that in Christ your name may be glorified in all the earth. Hear now our silent confessions. Lord, we know that you love us. Help us to trust your love and to relax into your loving arms. Amen.
Oh man, what a blessing you guys are. Thank you. I'm trying to get used to having the altar down here. It's really easy to just... But that's probably not the best thing to do. Although I guess I could say I'm leaning on God. Yeah. This fall we have been reading James Bryan Smith's book, The Good and Beautiful God. And Smith uh, emphasizes that we have false narratives, uh, false stories in our heads about God. And these false stories complicate our lives. They screw up the way we approach things. We fix the problem by learning from Jesus, who shows us the true nature of God in the stories of our lives. And so far what we've learned is that God is good, God is loving, God is holy, and God is generous. Today, we learn that God is trustworthy. So, it's time for true confessions of a parent. Who here has ever forgotten their kids and left them behind somewhere? I was really hoping to see more hands than that. <laughs> it happens to most of us. Back when we lived in rural Indiana, my wife, Annalisa, once drove off and left Eric, who was three at the time, at home all by himself. Several miles down the road, she uh, asked over her shoulder our daughter, Anna, who was six at the time, so how's Eric doing? And six-year-old Anna, who was already a bookworm, pulled her nose out of her book, looked over at her brother's empty car seat and said, oh, <laughs> Eric isn't here. <laughs> oh, panic. Annalisa slammed on the brakes and did a three-point turn in the country road and sped home only to find the house empty. Then she slowly drove down the road in the other direction, and after about a half a mile, she found Eric walking down the road with our little dog, Kip, just walking along. Well, once Eric figured out he'd been left behind, he said, hmm, I know Aunt Mindy lives that way. So he and Kip started walking. He didn't know it was three miles to Aunt Mindy's house. And I will tell you, the God moment here is that our little dog, Kip, was a dog of very little brain. And uh, Kip had spent his early life uh, strapped to a clothesline in a backyard and always pulling on the clothesline. And we found out that uh, we could not let him run free in our yard because as soon as you let him off his leash, he would just take off in a straight line waiting for the clothesline to yank him back. He literally ran across an 80-acre field one time, and we dro just drove around the gravel road to the other side and waited for him to come out and grabbed him. But did he run off? No, he stayed by Eric, just trotting along, protecting him, staying with him. So, whew. Well, humans are flawed. Even the most loving parent screws up once in a while, even the most loving husband sometimes illustrates a sermon with a story about his wife instead of himself. <laughs> yes, I've forgotten the kids too. So it's natural for us to project our failings onto God. I mean, sure, God loves us, but God probably also forgets about us once in a while, right? I mean, I just have three kids. God has a whole world, billions of people to care for. It wouldn't be too surprising if God just didn't pay that close attention to us. God might be good all the time, but is God always paying attention? Is God always there for us? And our experience seems to bear this out because sometimes we suffer. Sometimes we're sick. Sometimes we endure financial hardship. Sometimes our families fall apart. Sometimes God doesn't seem to answer our prayers. Sometimes we don't see God in action. Sometimes we don't feel God's presence. Sometimes it seems like God has forgotten us. So what does Jesus teach us about God as a loving parent? Well, Jesus teaches us that God does not forget us. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, he taught them the intimate prayer of a trusting child. From the Lord's Prayer, we can deduce six things about God. Our Father in heaven. God is nearby. Contrary to what you think, that means that God is nearby. In Jewish thinking, heaven was not something infinitely far away, invisible, remote, and inaccessible. 
but heaven was literally the sky right over our heads. Remember Jesus' baptism? We're told the heavens opened and God spoke, this is my beloved child. God is as close as the air we breathe, watching over God's beloved children. Hallowed be your name. God is holy and pure. There is nothing bad about God. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God is powerful, we know that. Give us today our daily bread. God provides for us, meeting our most basic needs. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. God is ever ready to forgive us. Uh, Richard Foster, who is one of today's leading spiritual writers, uh, puts it this way. He says, at the heart of God is the desire to forgive and to give. God longs to forgive us even more than we long to be forgiven. All we have to do is ask. And then finally, save us from the time of trial. Protect us from evil. God saves us and God protects us. <coughs> From the Lord's Prayer, we learn that God is near, God is pure and good, God is powerful, God is caring, God is forgiving, God is protecting. And these are the characteristics of a loving parent. We see Jesus putting this to work and into practice in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, we know at that time that Jesus is about to face the loneliness of abandonment by his disciples. He's about to face the disgrace of arrest and trial, the pain of torture. He's about to face the ultimate suffering of death on the cross. And yet he begins his prayer with a term of intimate trust, Abba, Father. Jesus is saying, as would a small child, as we might have said to our parents, Papa, Mama, Daddy, Mommy. And Jesus continues with a very reasonable request. It's a prayer we often uh, lift up. Take this cup from me. Jesus is no more eager to endure the cup of sorrows, the agony of crucifixion for the world's sins, than we are to suffer the consequences and agony of this broken world. But then Jesus finishes by bowing to God. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Your will be done, Papa. I know that you love me, and I trust you to bring me through this, even through this. Now, thinking about this, and then thinking about our own lives, what is our cup of sorrows? What's the trial that comes between me and God, between you and God? And in that trial, can you give yourself to God's will, trusting that God's love will see you through? Friends, God does not forget us. God does not abandon us. And here is the truth that Jesus teaches us. We can trust God as intimately as a child trusts a parent and with far more confidence. Theologian Thomas Smale puts it this way, and this is, this is powerful. The father that Jesus addresses in the garden is the one that he has known all his life and found to be bountiful in provision, reliable in his promises, and utterly faithful in his love. Jesus can obey the will that sends him to the cross with hope and expectation because it is the will of Abba whose love has been so proved that it can now be trusted so fully by being obeyed so completely. This is not legal obedience driven by commandment, but trusting response to known love. Let me say that again. Love that has been proved so completely that it can now be trusted so fully by being obeyed so completely. This is a trusting response to God's known love. God does not forget us. In this broken world, we will have suffering even as Jesus suffered. But we can trust God to be with us every step 
of the way. We can lean on God's strength. We can hope for and trust the promise of something better to come. Still, these, these cups that we drink are bitter. These, these obstacles that we face in life are bitter. So how do we get through? Well, let me a- answer that by asking you a question. Uh, what do you see uh, here? Now, some people with a psychology background are thinking, is that a dog? Is it a cloud? (laughs) Most people just see an ink stain, right? A dark mess that is spoiling the white paper. But seeing that is like focusing on our cup of sorrow, on the pain or the suffering that we endure. It's human nature. We tend to focus on, we tend to obsess over the darkness, the stains in our lives. But what we forget to see is the widespread mercy of God the clean slate, the potential. Most of that screen is white. When we find ourselves in our dark moments, staring into our cups of sorrow, focusing on the stains of sin in our lives, we need to remember that we can trust God. We need to look around and see the many mercies, the many blessings, the many reminders of God's presence and God's goodness. We need to remember that we can trust God's love. We all endure some darkness in our lives, but when it seems dark, we need to open our eyes. God has not forgotten us. God's light still shines. Anthony the Great, one of the fathers of the church, said that to say that God turns away from the sinful is like saying that the sun hides from the blind. It's still there. God is still there. God does not forget or ignore us, as the sun is always there offering warmth and light even when we can't see it. So God is always there to love us even through our dark times. God loves to give and to forgive. We can trust God. Amen. Amen. So we enter our prayer time. What joys and concerns do we want to lift up to the Lord this morning? Prayers for our military and those who serve us on a daily basis. Thank you, Jack. 
Yep. Prayers for the people of Florida uh, who have been affected by the hurricane. And continuing prayers for uh, those in other areas who have been similarly affected. Yeah. Prayers for people of Central America who uh, do not enjoy safety at home and are fleeing and seeking safe places. Thank you. So prayers for Sandy's husband, David, who's having cataract surgery this week. Uh, Joyce Weezy um, uh, had uh, surgery this week and is, uh, was doing well at the last report I had, so please keep her in your prayers. Prayers for Nicole and that her cancer surgery goes well this week. That's a great ministry. So uh, thanks to the men's fellowship, group, club. Uh, who have purchased a lift chair uh, that uh, can be loaned to people uh, who uh, need that assistance. And uh, Dean Baldwin uh, uh, just got back from the hospital, and so uh, hopefully he'll be able to make good use of that. Okay, prayers for Kathy, who has medical tests. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Beam has her first chemo uh, this week, so uh, prayers for her as well. So prayers for Amanda, who's taking care of three little kids while her husband is overseas. So. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. We'll begin at the moment of silent prayer. Lord, there is certainly plenty of trouble and trial in this world. As we hear news of uh, extreme weather events uh, and wars and disasters, uh, economic unrest that is causing the displacement and sometimes death of so many people. As we look around us at our friends and neighbors and family members and see them undergoing uh, terrific struggle with illness, disease, cancer, or with uh, other trials of life, Lord, it is hard to see sometimes your goodness. Help us to remember that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow, that you are with us and that you comfort us and that you will lead us on to still waters. Lord, we give you thanks for the way that we find your presence in our lives. Whether we have that assurance in our hearts or whether it is the uh, warm hands and arms of friends and neighbors reaching out to embrace us and to pray with us. In every situation that we find ourselves, Lord, help us to see you in it. Help us to see the ways that you invite us to be present and to be a blessing. Help us to bring your light into this world. We ask these things in your name and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We have a chance now to offer our tithes and offerings to the Lord. I'll invite the ushers to come around.
Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. For by your will, all things are created and have their being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your great faithfulness. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Uh, it's been good to have you with us on a very full Sunday. Uh, Brian, when the Packers don't play on Sunday, that means I get to go long. So, <laughs> But don't worry, the cake will still be down there. Um, Thank you for worshiping with us. If you're a guest and you'd like to know more about this congregation where uh, we encounter God's uh, loving and trustworthy presence in our lives on a regular basis, ask the people around you. They can tell you how they've uh, experienced God in the midst of this fellowship, uh, and they would be happy to share that good news with you. Uh, if you would like to get together for prayer, then please, by all means, give me a call. I would be happy to spend some time this week. Now we're going to sing a couple of, uh, no, we're going to sing a song, and then we'll have a blessing, and then we will go forth. Let me offer a, uh, a thanksgiving that's going to seem very familiar to many of you. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, my friends and my family and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. As you go forth today, remember that the Lord is good to you. The Lord is loving. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. <laughs> 